So let's talk about three ways daffodils can add to your garden. So I live in zone 5B and that means that it's the beginning of spring and every year a site that I really look forward to is the first little tips of the green daffodils coming up through the snow covered ground. And I think that this first sight of foliage from the bulbs coming up just inspires a feeling of I don't know, hope or change, especially for those of us, myself included, who love the winter, but after a long cold season, it's nice to see something new come up out of the ground. And I think daffodils are a really wonderful place to start if you're a beginner uh, because they are living a low maintenance lifestyle. They're really, really easy to plant. They're super easy to grow and they're a perennial from zones three to eight. So you plant them once and you're rewarded year after year with a spectacular sight. I'm shooting in my shed today and so if you see variations in lighting, you might even hear the little stream that runs right by it, but I think that's all part of the charm, so we're just going to roll with it. Welcome to True Freedom Permaculture, where I show you all the tips and tricks you need to have a green thumb, even if you weren't born with one. The first way daffodils add to your garden is the most obvious. It's the variety and the beauty that they add to it. And daffodils really create a lot of visual interest, especially when you layer them in with other types of plants. Let's take a close-up look at one together. This one is a double daffodil, and I just love the way the ruffled petals and the variation of color play together here. Also appropriate because of the spring, it reminds me of the colors of an egg, the yolks and the whites, doesn't it? They even have miniature ones, like the ones you see here. There are all different varieties, and you can plant different types to create visual diversity and extend the season that you're seeing their blooms. You can also grow daffodils as cut flowers, and this one in particular has this really sweet and subtle smell. And my experience with using daffodils as cut flowers, I've seen some videos online actually where they say you can cut them right before they're gonna bloom to extend their base time, let's call it. But they, for me, only last maybe like a day or two, maybe three at the most, when I bring them inside. So not to say it's not worth it for a special occasion, but I tend to use other flowers instead as my cut flowers of choice when I'm bringing them indoors. But still beautiful. The second reason is their ability to suppress grass. And now how can we use this to our advantage? Well, you can plant the daffodil bulbs around a tree, which we have done here. This is a dwarf apple tree that we planted a couple years ago. And along the south side of the tree, we have the daffodils because they will tolerate partial shade. In the front, we planted some garlic, which is just starting to come up. I don't know if you can see it. You might not be able to see it yet. Oh, there's one. Yeah, so anyway, back to the grass. So it does have the ability to suppress grass because the grass will compete with the tree for water because they both have some shallow roots. So if you can cut down on the amount of grass, that is going to help you out. Also, what's nice about daffodils is that they're done blooming and the foliage will die back by summer. So they will not compete for water and nutrients with the other items in and around the area. So for example, the comfrey that you see here and the tree, they won't compete for nutrients and water during a time when it's the hardest to get. The third way daffodils add to your garden is that they are deer and rodent resistant. They are resistant to these animals because they contain toxins. And this is a really big deal here in upstate New York. And I know that this is not something unique to my area. I know quite a few of you have issues with deer eating things. So you know as well as me that if I have a bulb that will tolerate partial shade and the deer won't eat it, this is major, major, major. And I can plant it outside of my fenced area. And that is great just because there's so many things that I have to plant within my fenced area to protect it from the deer. That if I have something that can remain largely unprotected, then that is fantastic. Okay, so those little bulbs of daffodils that were planted around the tree that I showed you, that's all part of an intentional setup called a guild. What's cool about guilds is that each part kind of helps out one another and they're greater than the sum of all their parts. And if you are interested in learning more about the topic of guilds, you can click on this video and I will meet you over there. I'll see you soon.